perfect model of a fighter. Right? Where, where he at now? Where, who he fight next? He took off to Jamaica. Yeah, man, brother, man. <laughs> right. Oh, you know, man. like, oh, yeah. Give him some time. Well, no, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, not, yeah. that's not what, that's not how it was presented. It was, he gonna stay active and all that shit. No, yeah, I mean, what, okay, okay, man. I mean, okay, so let me ask you, how, how often does that, I say every four, four, four months, is that's an active fighter? Three times a year. Well, I thought he was going to be fighting five times. Okay, I might have been mistaken. Last month, you know what I'm saying? So we got June, July, August, September. I can see him fighting in September. I think that's a good that's a good turnaround. Who? What, what top level fighter? What top level fighter fought three times in a year? Last. Terrence Crawford Terrence Crawford fought three times last year. Yeah. Errol Spence fought five times. Uh, what was that? Uh, fifteen. <laughs> you're talking about when he first started. Yeah, of course, somebody said world. world. He he talking, he's talking about Rollo was talking about world. He champion. started. He started in 2000. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but from the aspect Man. of a lot of people, they want to see Errol Spence fight Troy King. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good fight. They should have that on the uh, Floyd McGregor undercard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in anything on that. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, that's that's a, that's a complete. That's and that's a hey, win. the winner yeah, should man. fight Chris Brown. You say what? The winner should fight Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. The way they. <laughs> and yeah. the lo- and the I don't even see what's so though. relevant. I don't even see so what's so relevant about them two guys getting into it. Hey, dog. <laughs> hey, dog. This motherfucker Aztec say he should have a tune-up with Tiger Woods, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Floyd should have had a tune-up fight with Tiger Woods. Oh, yeah. shit, Before dog. I heard that shit, man. That was cracking up, dog. All right, I know. But, but he, he said should. it so serious. He was like, and you know what? He should uh, He should have a tune-up with Tiger Woods. And then he, I didn't, it didn't even register at first that he said Tiger Woods because he said it so serious. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Damn, boy. That's a circus right there, boy. What y'all think about packing Jeff Horn, man? Anybody think Jeff Horn got a chance to pull off the upset? Can I start? Can I speak on that? Go ahead. No, no, but I believe, I to play three. Uh, Let's look at history, all right? I was talking to someone about this last night. Mike Tyson showed up in Japan late, got beat by Buster Douglas. Pacquiao shows up in Australia way too late. He's underestimating Jeff Horn a little bit. Who knows what Pacquiao's been doing? And uh, Jeff Horn is, is taking himself serious. So there's a chance with Pacquiao's age and fighting in Australia... Showing up somewhat late, having to deal with uh, possible altitude sickness and all the problems that come with that. Um, there's a chance Jeff Horn could pull up an upset. There's also a chance he could end up in a goddamn grave. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, shit. He, he could end up on both sides of the spectrum, huh? Yeah. Well, 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 you know what? This is something that I thought about just last night. Bob Arum somehow, some way, got his hands on this fight to be on ESPN. What better stage for your main attraction to fall than on the biggest sports platform there is? Now, if right. Pacquiao were to lose, that's automatically going to, especially if he get knocked out on some Marquez type shit, that is going to be the top running story on ESPN from July the 1st to July the 7th for sure. He yeah. How good is Jeff Horn? Oh, uh, shit. Don't, I, I don't, don't know who Jeff Horn is. We don't know, right? And I think that's the main point that we got to look at. The fact that we don't know how good Jeff Horn is means that this was the right decision for the right time. I think they're building up for the next fight. So this fight, it's for free. It's on... ESPN, they're fighting Jeff Horn. No one knows who the fuck he is. He he might win, he might not. Most likely, I guarantee you, he won't. And then they're going to start talking about another fight, which we probably haven't thought about. But I think it might lead to Crawford Pacquiao or something like that. Hopefully. 
I mean, especially if Crawford's next fight is on ESPN too. I mean, that's the best way to build the the uh, the brand or the platform that they're using. You know, I, I, but I always I kept hearing that ES. I mean, uh, ESPN pay per view is in in the in the you know in the deal too. So if that ends up on pay per view, that's kind of shitty. But I mean, can y'all imagine Pacquiao Crawford on ESPN? That should be dope. Oh yeah, that would be huge. Oh yeah, millions like, and millions of people tuning for that. Oh yeah, yeah. I think people might even stumble on that accidentally, just just channel surfing. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And see, I could see. But ESPN. you know, it, we shouldn't we shouldn't think like we used to a few years ago when we already expected these promoters not to work with each other because Terrence Crawford already fought a PBC fighter. So let's include some PBC fighters in the mix for Manny Pacquiao. Um, he's welterweight. And it, obviously it looks like it's possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, go ahead. I'd like to see him against Keith Thurman. I think that would be a big fight. And... Um, Closer to unification, it's a it's a meaningful unification. C- correct. Yes, it is. Um, I believe for some reason I think a lot of those guys like like when 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 uh, Keith came off that uh, Danny Garcia win, a lot of people were starting to call him out. You know, I don't know if they, you know, it's kind of going around in the boxing circles. They think Keith Thurman's sweet, but if. That'd be a good fight for Pacquiao to get some work, man. I definitely would like to see that one. You say you think people would call him out since? You think that's like who? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Garcia. It, it, it's not like it used to be. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Garcia. With, you mean with Thurman, you, right? Hold on. You saying, you saying people, people calling out Keith Thurman more so than not, right? Yeah, more yeah. Like, it, 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 people are saying, like, Errol Spence is more open to fighting Keith Thurman. I mean, uh, um, there's guys coming out saying that they're willing to fight Keith Thurman. Whether they're serious or not, they're just talking or, you know, have Twitter fingers. Whatever it is, they're, they're doing it more than they did a few years ago. And a few years ago, Thurman was the monster in the division. He's the guy that everyone was avoiding. But I, I think... I think a lot of people are underestimating. They think that his injuries are wearing him down, or I don't know what's going through their head. But yeah, there's more people calling him out. Well, I don't right. think I, I think agree. people always been calling out Thurman. I think what has happened is they they end up somehow getting proven wrong. Like even back in the day, let's take it. Mike Donald was supposed to fault Keith Thurman, but he was willing to fight him. But once he saw the footage of him, for whatever reason, or heard stories about Keith Thurman, he decided to. Not fighting. Collab- oh, right. Well, they were going to put Keith Thurman up against him as a tune-up fight for another right. big fight from Madonna. And and Madonna's team looked at him and they were oh, like, what you oh, said? You said tune-up fight. Tune up Hold, fight. On. Yeah, Hold on. You, kind of, you said tune-up fight. Madonna was on the comeback trail. Yeah, Madonna was on the comeback trail. They were going to put Keith... They, they were looking for a tune-up fight. And then they were presented Keith Thurman. And that would, that would have been a great match. And when they saw the footage, they were like, well, this is not, this is a real fight. <laughs> right. And, so, and, so, and then the same thing happened with Collazo. I remember Collazo was like, oh, man, I want to fight Keith Thurman. He had like, he, and then he gets in there and he uh, knocks out Victor Ortiz. Then he says, I want to have a playoff fight off with Amir Khan to fight Mayweather. Then after he gets destroyed by Amir Khan, then he won't, comes back and fight Keith. So, you know, Sean Porter, same thing. Sean Porter, they supposed to fight when he had the IBF title. But Kenny Porter said, no, no, let's just wait to keep get the WBA strap and it'll be bigger and better. Of course, obviously, oh, Sean Porter lost his strap in the tournament. So they always say this about Keith Thurman. They keep losing. In addition to losing know, outside of Keith Thurman. That was the worst decision. I think that's one of the biggest... Uh, the biggest fuck ups for for PVC is not making the Sean Porter and Keith Thurman fight when they were, when they're both undefeated and both champions. I agree. I agree, but they didn't. People didn't. People, a lot of people was like, "No, I don't want to see Thurman versus Porter because I don't want them to knock each other off." And they didn't. They weren't big fans of strenuous boxing matches. Then, see, see, like I said, man, I've been calling for these fights 
And these other people say they want these fights and then they want to make these provisions for their favorite fighters. And then later they want to act like they've been calling for these fights. I, I remember specifically wanting to see Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter three years ago. Yeah, and I wanted to see Keith Thurman versus Broner four years ago. You know what I mean? Right. So, you oh, remember what we were talking about? Keith Thurman versus Khan, Keith Thurman yeah. versus Mayweather, yep. Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Khan said no. he'll fight Keith Thurman too. All of them say, nobody never, they say they'll fight Keith Thurman until after either A, they have to fight him for real or, or something goes. They always say that, man. And so uh, it's the same old thing. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the sad part is, is that the people that were saying that they didn't want to see someone fall off between um, between Porter and, and Thurman, they they jumped ship to Spence. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They, they, thank you. That's so exactly kind of like we were playing like as if they were hardcore fans for Keith Thurman and Porter, but then they found another guy and, and their their careers, I think, if you look at it in retrospect, it hurt because Keith Thurman would already have the IBF belt because yep. he, he obviously beat Porter. So if he beat him now, he could beat him back then. I agree. Uh-huh. It would have been a better fight, too. Yeah. I don't think he beat him clearly. I think uh, Porter did some excellent work, and he's got a big shot in the rematch. I don't think he held a beat in Thurman. Mm. I know you'll disagree with me on that with that, uh, Zone. Well, he he sent him to the hospital with a concussion. I mean, and then we clearly yeah. seen we seen we clearly saw the guy get staggered three, four times through the fight. I mean, good on him that he didn't go down. Good on him that he put up a good fight. That's what's supposed to happen. Like, dudes don't supposed to be good going here and get snuffed out. That's, that's right. not how it's supposed to go. If you're good, it's supposed to be competitive and clean. And one thing that Keith Thurman didn't get credit for in that fight, he tamed the bull. Keith Thurman could have came out with butts, cuts, fouls, crying to the ref, like we seen that Berto was doing, what we seen Broner was doing. But Keith Thurman made a clean, decisive fight, man. And he made Sean Porter fight the right way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I don't see. You, I mean, think about. It. I mean, just think about how many disgusting fights that Sean Porter uh, yeah, had. Yeah, you ain't got to tell hear, me. Uh, you ain't got to tell me. Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner. Is, that was an ugly fight. And the Broto fight. Broto was like, man, I want to retire after that. I don't want to deal. He made an interview saying, I don't want to. People don't like to fight Sean Porter because they don't want to deal with the bullshit. They don't want to mm-hmm. deal with the mauling, headbutting, and the fans talking about how ugly. Okay, well, all the fans who like ugly, what was the ugly when Keith Thurman was whooping his ass? What was the ugly when he sent him to the hospital for, quote-unquote, dehydration, and he couldn't make the post-fight press conference? But we all know what that really was, a concussion. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see... I like Sean Porter. And I think he did a good job. But I ain't never seen nobody tame him and control him like Keith Thurman did. I, that's just my opinion. Yeah, he, he did do an excellent job of that. Uh, Porter is as dirty as they come. I mean, he's a <laughs> he's an in your face, um, you know, the type of fighter to blow snot on you while he's headbutting you and punching you at the same time with both hands, standing there yeah. non orthodox, stand squared off, you know, diving in with his goddamn head in his gloves at the same time. Yep. Ooh, boy, I wish. And I had an eight four. I had eight four. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, a close, a, like a close one, you know what I mean? You know, nobody had a 10-9 round in there, but I had a good 8-4, man. 8 for Keith Thurman, 4 for Porter. Yeah, I, think I, I had it slightly a slightly closer, good. slightly closer, but um, I was giving him room for his bullshit. And, well, slightly you know, closer I could have scored it different. Slightly closer can only be one more round. Because two, right. two, be, two more rounds would be five. even. Yeah, two more rounds would be even. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... that's. Well, I mean, I'm going to make a video on that about how I feel. I think 7-5 and 8-4 are close fights. 9-3. Right. 10... Uh, what's that? 9-3, nine, nine, 10-2 ten, are ten, wide. Two, and, then, and then 11-1 and 12-0 are wipeouts. But it's, it's wipeouts, wide, and close. Two, two, and two. That's how I feel. 
because with an eight four, right. like you just said, two two rounds the other way, it's an even fight. Right. And I give them eight four, like I said, man, because I know somebody's gonna be fine. So when I'm, I'm saying eight four, I'm giving you my worst case scenario, <laughs> just to you know try to meet you somewhere. But seven five, absolutely not, man. That's ridiculous. I mean, I know it's exciting, but the excitement of the fight don't make it. The, the excitement and the atmosphere doesn't determine the results of the fight. If it's a competitive, cool, nice atmosphere, that doesn't automatically make it six six. And then you're trying to figure out who you're gonna give it. Seven five to me. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. Not for me at least. Yeah, Porter's gonna have to reevaluate his fighting style. He said he's considering that. Yeah. Porter he, he said he, he, he Yeah. Because is he Porter is, is Porter ranked in, in um in any of the other belts other than uh IBS or no, he's not even ranked IBF. Last time I checked, I think he got some beef going with IBF. I think he's ranked WBC for sure. WBC, yeah, and, he's and, the and number WBA. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Alberto, and Alberto fought for Eliminator. That was Eliminator for the well, WBC. How in the hell? Wait, how is he not ranked anymore for the IBF? I, I don't know, man. I he hasn't been ranked since he one, lost. He's the number one guy in the WBC. That's weird. That's why I don't even look at them goddamn rankings. Yeah, that's it. They're weird. so, uh, I mean, they're just fraudulent companies. I don't even, you know, I don't well, even care about these shit. The idea has to be some weird shit. You know, I tend to lean to a boxing rig, man, just to look at what these guys are ranking. I feel like that's the, the best one. And I don't look at anything else. I look at them just to see who might be a, for, up for an eliminator. You know what I mean? But, other than that, man, I really genuinely just look at boxing rate, man. It's not all under the opinion. Boxing rate, man. I yeah. just go down the list. Because they have a, a undeniable formula. It makes sense. You can follow the point system per fight. No and political bullshit. Though. Yeah, they don't no they don't payoff. consider they don't consider payoffs, oh, yeah. they don't consider belts, they don't consider all that shit that to oh he's got eight belts, he's an eight time world champion in ten different weight classes. Like right. that's possible, right? So they don't. They don't say. They don't do that. They just calculate your level of opposition and based on the points that they have going into the fight, and they track it. They they have a better uh, divisional rankings. I look at the belt rankings every now and then because um, sometimes I'm trying to figure out you know why certain fights happened and why certain fights didn't. Um, I do too. I agree. Yeah. I, I I I think that it's kind of weird that the IBF wouldn't have them. Uh, ranked, well, I'll double check it. But if he's not ranked under the IBF, I mean, that's a good fight for uh, for Errol Spence, anyways. I mean, that's, that's what I was saying, man. If it, if it were me and I was Sean Porter, I would be clamoring to fight Earl Spence because if you beat Earl Spence, then you get your title and then you get to fight for your eliminator against Keith Thurman. Exactly. Hey, if it were me, I would fight. I would fight Spence. And if I, if, okay, if I fight Spence for my voluntary, if I can't beat Keith Thurman, I'll fight Lamont Peterson. Because, you know, yeah. WBC allow you to hold your uh, number one contender spot longer than other sanctioning bodies. That's enough time to try to collect, you know, two, three belts, man, if Sean Porter is about to life. Right. And I've been saying this for, you, for, 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 for a while, man. I'm going to tell you, Sean Porter wants no part of Earl Spence dude if he can help it. Tell him. When he talks about uh, Earl Spence, he talks like he ain't even in the damn division. Uh, you know, uh, Earl Spence yeah, is a uh, division all on this. Earth, man. Well, has Errol Spence talked about Sean Porter like that? Like, he really wants to fight him? I haven't heard that. You said what? Has Errol Spence talked about Sean Porter like that? Like, like he wants to fight him? Has he made a clear the fight he wants they next? Bring, they, they bring up Sean Porter, Earl Spence, say, look, man. I know I, he said Sean Porter and his dad try to be cool and everything, and we cool, we friends, and, but you know, now, like I said, this is business. So, you know what I'm saying? We can put that stuff to the side, go in there and fight, and we can go to the club afterwards or something. That's what he said. He said, but, you know, I, I, I'll fight. I'm not, he said, I'm not shying away from any fights. Just because we friends, 
You know what I'm saying? Or they want to be friends and stuff like that. That's what he said. And he said, I'll fight him. I heard, I'll, I'll I'll heard all that before. <laughs> now that he got his title, I only heard Danny Garcia. And I, he, he, know, said he said that after. after. He said that after that. Right, after yeah, he got just, his title. Yeah, I just heard that. I heard he want Danny Garcia. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't heard him talk about John Porter at all. And, I mean, I heard him before. I, yeah, I did before, but I haven't seen anything recent where they're what he's saying. He wants them. I think you know. I don't know why. Maybe he's already made that point clear. But he's saying he adamantly wants Danny Garcia now, which is a good fight too. I don't. I don't mind that. I don't see Garcia taking that fight anytime Hell no, soon. Danny ain't taking that shit, man. Yeah. yeah, Danny got some. Danny got to come up with something because he disappeared. Um, that ain't yeah. that ain't working. We need to find out what's up with Danny Garcia. Um, next as well too. Uh, Amir Khan, Timothy Bradley. Uh. I'm glad Robert Guerrero back. Robert Guerrero is about to fight somebody uh, pretty good. I think he's going to fight. He's fighting, uh, nah, not nobody. Uh, Figueroa, right? Omar Figueroa. Uh, that's, 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 no, Figueroa. He's not, he's not Figueroa. pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, that's not nobody pretty good. Nah. Nah, he's going to fight. Hold on, hold on. Robert Guerrero is about to fight Omar Figueroa? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The undefeated, the undefeated figure roll. Yeah, the undi, yeah, the undefeated yeah. figure roll. Oh yep. man, no, hell no. no. Omar Figueroa ain't undefeated. Omar Figueroa, Omar Figueroa, Who? Hold up, huh? Figueroa, I don't think Figueroa is undefeated at all. Omar Figueroa, you talking about memory? Man, he's, he's, the the one that, he's undefeated, bro. Yeah, that's the same one that beat Ricky Burns and Estrada and Demarco and them. He's undefeated. Yeah, you beat Cotto. Yeah, the one who beat Cotto, brother, too. Yeah, the one who, the one who. Yeah, uh, he's undefeated. It was, it was yeah. a no decision. What I'm thinking about. My bad. Yeah, I'm gonna say what y'all. I'm like this dude. He just fell off the radar. I don't know why because he been sneaking fighting at one four seven. People ain't been looking at him, man. Well, I don't had this conversation before, so I know. I'm like, who he, who he lost to? Unless he lost in Mexico or something on a on a low. But that dude, he just we don't know what he did. He had like a layoff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, lanky hand injuries. Yeah, the lanky, the lanky tall kid, man. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. Omar Figueroa ain't bad. He, uh, he said he had serious hand injuries and was resorting to injecting monkey blood and all kinds of shit to get to deal with his hand. Okay. What the hell? Yeah, yeah what's up with that? Is that safe? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know about all that, man. I just know Is that, that real. I never heard of that. That's and I was looking fight. at this play last night. I was listening to the uh, their broadcast on the fight, you know, where, where they call in. Reporters Boxing call and ask questions. And oh, he okay. asked about his hand, and he said that uh, they tried traveling to different countries, all kinds of voodoo bullshit, um, injecting it with monkey blood. I don't know if this is real. Or what the hell is going on? Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it doesn't really matter anyways. It's a good fight. The Robert Guerrero, he could, I mean, he could either make a name for himself by beating this undefeated fighter or he could get bopped over. The, yeah. the, the guy he's fighting beat Ricky Burns. Yeah. Dongo did. He beat Ricky Burns before Dongo did. Yep. Somehow Ricky uh-huh. Burns got a title shot right after that. But... Yeah, yeah. Figueroa was a good fighter. You got to remember who he was, man. He was fight. He was fighting uh, heavy, man. It just that for some reason he just feared. And now we know that he had hands in the tall, uh, rangy guy. He was that lightweight. And shit, I guess the layoff he on he grew out of the weight class and had to fight at one four seven or between one forty and one four seven. Yeah, that would have been a cool. Uh, <laughs> that would have been a cool comeback fight for Earl Spence, man. They both promoted by Al Haynes. Hey, you guys see Carlos Molina that used to be at, at, at uh, junior middleweight, the one that had a close fight with Lara, arguably won. The one that fought Kirkland had that weird fight. Um, he's now at welterweight. What? That he's is- ranked. He's ranked under I think the WBC um, as a top ten. So he's moving up the rankings. I think in one of the rankings he's up close to number three, number four. This guy's a sleeper in that division if he ends up fighting wow. one of the top guys. 
So he he shrunk down from 154 and just got into a good way. Because I think, you know who else you got, man? Curtis Stevens need to get out of 160 and come down 154, 147. If, if oh. he was to do that, man, he'll be all right. You you know he used to fight at 168, right? That's... <laughs> I, I know, I know. And then, listen, listen, I'm, I ain't talking about how difficult it may be or can he do it. I'm just saying it, it's food for thought. If he can't do it, then obviously he can't do it. <laughs> but well, he would be nasty. I'm under the impression that he's fighting around his walking around weight. I, now, I definitely agree with that. But Good for him. Some people see Curtis Stevens kind of, you know, give me the impression too, man, that he'd be fucking off in New York sometimes, man, getting tattoos and ballooning up a little bit more than he should too, man, because the dude went on 5'7". I don't know. I don't know. He, 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 you know what? He just give me the impression that he don't do too much road work. Like, he don't jog. Like, a lot of these fighters don't jog anymore. They, that's why we see all this sloppy... You know, patient fighting. We don't see the explosive combination punching. We see these guys getting broke down by dirty fighters because a lot of guys get on the fucking bike and a lot of guys do like two miles. A lot of guys do fucking just gym work. They don't actually get on the fucking road and run four or five miles. Like, Floyd Mayweather do that, you know. Other people claim they do it, but I know for a fact that, you know, Floyd does it, but... You know, yeah, it, and road, road else, work is something that these modern fighters don't want to do, but it's absolutely necessary. Absolutely, mm-hmm. because w- w- when you run, man, on it, it's nothing that because you have to keep your hands locked. You have to. It's almost like you emulate that position of a boxer in a sense. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't know why these guys are not doing it, and that's why you see a lot of guys' hands dropping, guys throwing one punch at a time, getting broke mm-hmm. down in the inside. It just it don't run. Oh, yes. It's a whole lot of that one punch at a time shit for sure. Right. And look at Kovalev. Now Kovalev wants to side with Virgil Hunter and, you know, associate himself with that network of fighting because they say, you know, this guy hadn't been running. This guy don't want to. He want to train, you know, you know, wants to fight, get made and stuff like that. He's not living a fighter lifestyle. Yeah, he's not he's living got a some heart lifestyle. problems. Heart problems or hard problems? Both. Heart, meaning uh, both. Oh. <laughs> as both. far as wanting to quit the fight and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, both, right? Yeah, I'm not too totally. interested in seeing him anymore. Y- yeah, I, I same way, man. I still. When he turns his back in the fight, I could give a shit less if he fights again. Right. Yeah. So what's and your, for what's Andre your Ward? I could care less about him too. I, I, I don't like the dirty tactics, and uh oh, oh, it was a shit fight. I think it's gonna go on. What you think about the uh, low blows and stuff? You just feel, you know, hey, they both fucked it away and you're not interested in seeing both of them? Yeah, I don't like the uh, dirty tactics by Ward. Never been a fan of him, all right? Mm -hmm. I don't like the bullshit that he pulled, not fighting, coming back. Uh, Let's go back to when he fought. uh, Shit, someone help me with the name. But he, this was... Possibly in a super six when he came in, uh, poss- white boy from Mikhail I don't Kessler. know, maybe Mikhail Europe Kessler. somewhere, huh? Mikhail Kessler, Kessler, yes, Kessler, Kessler. With yeah. the a guy that he could have beat with talent, but instead he resorted to elbows, mm-hmm. headbutt, headbutt, elbow, low blow. <laughs> uh, fuck that. And Kovalev <laughs> just turned his back. Yeah, he was getting hit with some low blows, but. You know, he he turned his back in a goddamn fight. Technically, the ref could have called it off there. Right. That is yeah. that is true. Yeah, true. That is a damn good point. That's true. And see, you know what's fucked that up about true. that, man? I think that I, I believe Andre Ward was on his way to getting a stoppage. But because he's such a fuck oh, yeah. boy, he, he, he fucked it up. You know what I mean? That's like... Can you yeah. imagine, like, Usain Bolt? You know, you, we all know the little thing when he was running and he goes look to the camera and shit. And I don't know if this is a rule, but let's just imagine it's a rule. Like, if you step in the other person's lane, you get disqualified. He leading, going ahead, and he stepping to the other person's lane and get disqualified. That's how that Andre War shit was. Like, you already have the guy. How, why would, how you even try and punch a guy in the stomach when he's leaned all the way over anyway? How does that even register in your mind? 
I'm gonna try and punch right, you dude right. in the stomach with the uppercut. Yeah, like what the a uppercut f- to the stomach? H- how? That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense. Not at all. There's Andre Ward for you. So I mean, as much as Kovalev, if you guys watched, if you guys, hmm? oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, um, I think that uh, if you guys watched the fight, Andre Ward was uh, the first the first couple rounds. I think he was trying to tire out Kovalev, which is kind of why Kovalev was leading in the scorecards. He was putting in more punches and being more aggressive, put it, pushing him up against the ropes and, uh, and controlling the center of the ring. I think he gave up those rounds so that way – in the middle of the fight, he can turn it up, which he did. Kovalev looked tired, and it could have been a legit stoppage, but its I don't think it's Ward's fault, honestly. If, there, if it's anyone's fault, it's got to be the ref. That's why they're there. Correct. Yep. Correct. No, if they're going to let you get away with it, Ward's going to take advantage of it. Someone has to, you know, control it. And Tony Weeks is just a bullshit referee. Well, yeah, they, they were complaining about they, him before. <clears throat> You know, Floyd was saying, uh, complaining about him yeah. in regards to the Madonna fight. Well, he didn't protect Floyd good in the Madonna fight. That was the problem. Right. Well, in, the, in the Madonna fight, um, Floyd was... Usually it's it's people complaining about Floyd's elbow or something like that or the gravity. But this time uh, in the Madonna fight, Madonna was the one, you know, just being a little bit more excessive with the dirty mm-hmm. tactic. Yeah. Um, but it's the ref, it's it's the ref's job to start calling out these things when it happens. The one thing I, I that blew my mind was that he made the call to stop the fight real quick. When I don't know if he would have maybe taken some time to think about it, look up at the screen, look at the replay. Something needs to change. There needs to be like in football where you could turn over a decision right then and there after the replay. Yeah, I don't do that. Uh, one thing I got a suggestion on that one thing they can do that they used to do Mills Lane used to do it all the time he will call time out all right mm-hmm. and go to um the officials on the side and talk to them yeah he did mm-hmm. he did Mills a little call but they don't want that and see remember the problem with Mills Lane was they you know Mills Lane at one point was he was becoming you know a standout star type of referee and remember they was like you know, we don't know about Mills Lane because they felt that he was, you know, having too much influence and he was getting too powerful in a sense. Yeah, I agree with you know, that. He, he was getting popular. They don't want the referee to start, you know, hey, you guys go over there and, and, and you come and start seeing the referee take control of the damn fight. And, and yeah. you can't be killing people momentum in a fist fight, man. Because you, if a guy's whooping on somebody's ass and you, you can't do that. And it's sure. just not... It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not like football and basketball where there's lows in the action. In the fist fight, they're lowering the action between the fucking rounds. Now what I.